Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Facebook Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. We are an all-natural plant-based fitness nutrition company. So, you know, I had started Clean Machine a while uh, back, and several years in, we had developed a couple of products and put them out, but everybody asked me, you're a plant-based fitness nutrition company, and you don't have a protein. And I'm like, okay, but building muscle is not just about protein. Uh, protein are essential amino acids, uh, especially branch chain amino acids, are building blocks and do help stimulate um, the growth of muscle tissue. Um, but there's so much more that goes into machinery of actually building and growing muscle. There's obviously hormones, there's um, vitamins and minerals, other nutrient factors, uh, phytonutrients and polyphenols all play a part. And just to give you an example, uh, like vitamin A. Vitamin A is actually needed for protein synthesis. Studies have shown that the longer the protein synthesis goes on, the more our stores of uh, vitamin A drop in the body. So there's a clear usage for not only protein synthesis, but muscle repair process. So Vitamin A also has a direct effect on uh, testosterone production and secretion. Um, it also assists, vitamin A assists in the process of uh, actually shuttling um, some of these hormones, growth factors, um, and, and hormones like testosterone to uh, their proper places. Um, and then you've got things like omega-3. Omega-3 is uh, an essential part, plays an essential role in muscle protein synthesis, the actual um, uh, process of once the body is told that it needs more uh, muscle proteins, creating those proteins, folding those proteins into the right shape, and then placing those proteins in the right, right place. All of that requires some machinery, and EPA has shown to improve muscle protein synthesis, especially in older folks. So even as we age, these nutrients become even more and more uh, important, not only for muscle growth, but for maintaining muscle and, and muscle strength. Now, that's something that I think a lot of us all want to do, which is how can we, once we get into good shape and we're working out in the gym and all, we're, if you're a natural athlete, there's a plateau. You get so far and you're probably not going to get much bigger than that. And that's fine, but you want to maintain that. You don't want it to drop off. You, you don't want it to drop off rapidly, especially if you're in times like this where a gym closes or you're traveling or something like that. What you don't want is to put in all that hard work, be consistent, do the right diet, and then end up losing five or six pounds of muscle just because you have an injury or because you have a work that travels to you know, an event or something. That's frustrating when you put all that effort in, all the training, buy all the supplements, do all the right things, and then drop five pounds of muscle because of something that you can't control. That sucks. But nutritionally, there are things that are clinically shown in published human studies to actually help preserve that muscle, help your body maintain both that muscle and the strength so that when you do get able to get back into the gym, like when this pandemic pandemic is over and you're actually able to get back into the gym, you want to maintain that muscle so that you're not going backwards a bunch of steps. Because that can really be hard on your psyche. You know, you can feel defeated. You can feel like, oh, I spent all that time and and now, you know, I've lost 10 pounds of muscle. That, that just really sucks. Well, nutrition can help you with this process, especially times like right now when we're going through a, a pandemic and things are shut down and we can't exercise as intensely or with the weights that we normally have or things like this. Um, so these nutrients are really important. Now, I started digging into the research and, and um, actually Dr. Greger, uh, I'll call him out when, when he does some really good research. I know he's kind of a, a basher of, uh, of supplements uh, and, and not sure why he goes there, <laughs> but he does do some great research. And I was looking at some of the research that he did, and I actually looked at pull some of the studies and he's looking at alkaline diet. So um, we talked about omega-3, uh, it's uh, EPA is important for muscle protein synthesis, 
Vitamin A is important for muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein repair and testosterone production. I'd say vitamin A actually um, builds up in the testes, believe it or not. And that's actually what helps promote the secretion of testosterone. Well, what is some of the best sources of calcium and magnesium, which is needed for muscle strength, right? Calcium for contraction, magnesium for relaxation of the muscle. When you're working out, you're, you're using up some of these nutrients, especially ma uh, magnesium and calcium for muscle contraction and relaxation. So what is high in calcium and magnesium, high in omega-3, high in vitamin A? These are your dark greens. That's it. So dark greens play a very important role in not only maintaining muscle strength and size, right? Maintaining that muscle, but also helps the, in the growth and repair model too as well. Now, greens do something else, which is pretty cool, which is they are alkaline, um, especially greens in their whole food state and greens that are in the raw or uh, less processed states. So that's a really cool thing. So we look at some of these researches and I've posted them uh, down in the comments section for you can do, but I'm gonna bring up the, the first one right here on the screen. So alkaline diets, this is the study title, uh, favor lean tissue mass in older adults. So the conclusion of the study was higher intake of fruits and vegetables actually favor preservation of muscle loss in older men and women. Okay, so that was older people, but that's a good indicator. That means that if you are taking a break or have an injury or have to travel or something that interrupts your normal workout routine, you're gonna stand to possibly lose less muscle by a higher intake of fruit and vegetables. And this is how a good plant-based diet can help you not only achieve your goals at optimal uh, physical fitness levels, but help you maintain them even when you can't work out. And that's really cool because that keeps you motivated. If you can keep those gains, even when you get interrupted, when things beyond your control pull you out of the gym or pull you out of your ability to work out, you can help maintain that just by having a high intake of fruits and especially dark greens, which are rich in these nutrients that I just talked about. So that was a unique study, but this one, this one goes a, a little bit further because this was just looking at older men and women, but this one looked at higher alkalinity uh, alkaline dietary load is associated with the greater indices of skeletal muscle mass in women. So this one was looking at women, but it was interesting that uh, it was independent of age, of physical activity, and even of protein intake. So they were maintaining muscle mass better just by having these dark green vegetables high in their diet, an alkaline-based diet. Remember, fruits and most fruits and vegetables, especially dark greens, are very alkaline. Now, there's been a lot of uh, back and forth about do alkalines know, but th these studies are looking at specifically uh, their effect on muscle retention. So we know acidosis creates an environment where the body tends to break down proteins to actually use that material as a way to help balance pH. Obviously, you can pull it out of bones too. Calcium is, is, is um, very alkaline, so our body can use that. But where is calcium found in our food supply? Mostly dark greens. Same with magnesium, mostly dark greens. So when I was developing a protein, I didn't want just another protein out there. And, and here's an interesting thing. Most of the proteins on the market are pea and rice proteins. Now, pea is actually alkaline, which is great. Other than greens, that's a really good source of protein to get because it's alkaline. But rice, on the other hand, is a grain. And most grains, like rice, are acid forming. So why would you want an acid forming grain <laughs> in your protein that is trying to help you build muscle and you're possibly creating an acid, partially acid environment in the bloodstream. You're counterproductive slightly at that measure. Yes, it may be a small amount, but when we're talking about having yourself be able to maintain these, um, that can be a very important part. 
this is the reason, one of the reasons why I did not include rice protein in our protein, clean green protein. The other big reason is that rice is generally very high in heavy metals, especially things like arsenic. Um, uh, rice is also one of the worst contributors to greenhouse gases. New studies showed that uh, rice is actually two to three times more detrimental to the environment in its growth process than most of the other food crops that we grow. So this is a really bad thing because the growth of, of rice paddies, rice fields, the flooding that creates these marshes, creates greenhouse gases, actually two different greenhouse gases, um, nitrous oxide, as well as um, increasing carbon load, the CO2. So it's, it does a double whammy on the environment, it's acid forming in the blood, and it's high in heavy metals. None of those things are, are good in my mind. That, and that's why I would never even use another plant protein that was your basic pea and rice protein out there. I wanted something, pea was great. Pea's really high in essential amino acids, high in branch chains, and it's a, a much lower environmental impact. But I wanted something to couple with that since pea was alkaline. It was like, great, good for the environment, great you know, great amino acid profile, great. I wanted something to couple with that other than rice protein, which was bad for the environment, bad for acidosis, and 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 and, and not so great for um, heavy metals. So when I found lentine, I was so excited. But remember, I was talking about all those other nutrients. Lentine is higher in vitamin A than almost any other dark green out there. Uh, even one of the highest in lutein's, which is a carotenoid, a, a type of vitamin A higher in omega-3s, right? Up to 35, 40% of your omega-3s in a single scoop. Remember, omega-3 EPA is involved in muscle protein synthesis. So it's got the vitamin A for testosterone health. It's got the vitamin A for muscle protein synthesis. It's got the EPA for muscle protein synthesis. It's whole food. It's dark green. So it's alkaline. That alkalinity will help you preserve that muscle. Now you've got a protein that is not only the highest in nutrient density. So you're getting all that nutrition. It's got the calcium, it's got the magnesium, almost 90% of your iron in this and then rounded scoop. I mean, blood building, and that's important for carrying oxygen in, um, uh, to the muscle tissue. So all of these cofactors, all of these extra nutrients, the fiber to help with uh, your gut health, that gut health to help pull in the nutrients that you need for it. This is the entire muscle building process. And this is the proper way to build muscle, not just isolated, stripped out protein from a plant, especially from a plant like rice that is acid forming. And you've got all these studies. I'm going to go ahead and post the third study up here, um, which uh, shows the uh, effect of an acidogenic, acidogenic diet. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Um, and I'll Post that right here so everybody can see it, and then I'll pull it up on the screen. So the effects of a acidogenic diet, which is an acid-forming diet, uh, foods that are higher in acid-forming on musculoskeletal, so uh, that's skeletal muscle, the muscle that connects between joints and tissues. That's the muscle we use for working out. Um, function in in addition of loss of muscle mass, sarcopenia, and negative nitro. Um, nitrogen balance. Nitrogen balance is how much nitrogen or amino acids your body is maintaining in itself. Sarcopenia is 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 muscle loss. Um, so sarcopenia is just the clinical term for what they call age-related muscle loss. But muscle loss can happen at any age, really. Uh, it can happen uh, because of diet, it can happen because of poisoning, it can happen because of radiation, it can happen for a whole host of different reasons. Um, many different pharmaceutical medicines can cause rapid muscle loss too as well, or muscle wasting. So all of these are keyed into um, uh, the effects of an acid forming diet. So again, this is a great reason to include when you're consuming protein, either consume a protein like clean green protein, which is 60% whole food, greens, dark greens, high in polyphenols, 
which not only help in the muscle building process, great studies on new polyphenols coming out on muscle building, but polyphenols also help with muscle, uh, with fat burning. So these are the two common things that most people are looking to do to get fitness, increase your muscle and reduce your body fat. And polyphenols do that. One of the highest in polyphenols, I know you probably can't read it down here, but um, one of the highest in polyphenols of, of any of the plants out there, rich in polyphenols, rich in chlorophyll, blood building, rich in iron, rich in calcium, magnesium, vitamin A off the charts, almost uh, 40% of your total vitamin A in a single scoop. I mean. This is the proper way to build and maintain muscle is in a healthy, more whole food diet. Remember, clean green protein is made from lentine, which is 60% of clean green protein is whole food lentine. And it's whole food. The only thing that's removed is water, just the water pressed out. And then you get the whole plant. You're actually getting the root, the stem, the leaf, and the flower. So you're getting the whole plant and all the nutrients that are spread out through that, including the nutrients, the B12 nutrition, which is also important for muscle health, that has actually sucked up. The, the plant actually thrives on the water and sucks up the B12 into its root system. And then we harvest that, squeeze the water out, and you're getting some of that B12, 20% of your daily requirements in just a single scoop of clean green protein. That's a beautiful thing that you're getting all this nutrition that goes into all the metaphysical, all the not metaphysical, kind of in a way, but um, biological and metabolic uh, actions that go into changing our physiology, changing our fitness levels, increasing and maintaining our muscle uh, health, our muscle strength, our muscle size while reducing body fat. That's why whole food nutrition is important. That's why I went whole food nutrition with our protein. I am really looking for the best quality ingredients out there so that you can have something different to choose from. You have a lot of products to choose from out there in the marketplace. Um, but, you know, we won the next year award, best supplement um, uh, of the year for uh, 2018. That was a huge honor for me because it represents that I am doing something really good for our community to help you get the most nutrition and to get the proper way to be helpful and maintain a great physique so you can represent and look great, feel great, and inspire others to do the right thing as well. Well, I've enjoyed this presentation. I hope you have too. If you like it, please give me a like, give it a share. So let's get some of this information that muscle building is not just about protein. Isolated, stripped down protein is not it. That's only one part of the whole complex picture of what the body requires. All the vitamins, all the nutrients, the polyphenols, the antioxidants all play a role in healthy uh, metabolism at the cellular level, which is what our whole muscle system functions on. So I hope you enjoy this. And um, we've got a, a, well, I can't say that on this because this is a Facebook Live and it may be seen later, but we've got some good stuff coming up for you. I'll announce them in, in following Facebook Lives. I won't be here next week. Um, I hope you all have happy holiday season, whatever holiday you are celebrating. Um, blessings to you all. And hope you stay healthy, happy, and enjoy, and keep with your fitness as well as you can. And uh, hopefully this pandemic will be over soon, and we will get back to optimal peak fitness if you aren't already with home-based gyms, bands, or whatever creative ways you figured out to keep healthy and fit for this season. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.